We all know what it's like to experience the frustration of not having our people at our church come to our events or engage in our activities. And so in this episode of Practical Church Planting, we're going to give you eight ways to keep your church calendar in front of your people. Thanks for joining us again today on Practical Church Planting. We're going to be giving you eight ways to keep your church calendar in front of your people. Yes, this is a problem, well, that we all want to have solutions for, is how do we let our people know what's going on so that they'll show up and remember? Yep. We all have people say, I didn't know, even though we feel like we told people a lot of times. What a lie. But also, there are times we probably didn't tell people as much as we thought. Definitely. And so our goal here is to give you practical ways and things that you can do to remind people of what you have coming up so that they can hopefully not miss out. That's right. More so people to attend. More people to attend. Uh, number one, not in any particular order. Some of these may be obvious. Some of these might not be obvious. But uh, these are all things that we have done. Yes. And that we, I think, currently do. Yep, we currently do all these things. So yep. here we go. The first one is a weekly newsletter. So many churches get email addresses. I would encourage you to do that if you don't. Mm-hmm. Um, we send out a email to all of our church just once a week, and we only send one. So a lot of churches do different yeah, things. We don't have like a communications expert mm-hmm. <laughs> on our staff, <laughs> yeah. but I think one is plenty because yeah. if you send too many things about too much stuff going on, people just aren't going to open it and they're not going to read it and they're going to see it's, oh, it's from you or it's the church thing. I'm not going to read it. So mm-hmm. we just do one. And it's very like basic. We don't have any images or whatever. It's just basic text because research says that's what people read the most yep. and not so super unfancy. Um, but part of the our structure is, you know, we have a couple of maybe one or two main things that we'll briefly talk about in the newsletter, and then we have our upcoming events, everything that's like within the next month. Mm-hmm. Um, typically not farther than that, unless it's a big thing, like maybe your Christmas Eve service or Easter or like some big, I don't know, trunk or treat, some big event you're doing. Yeah. Typically it's not far advanced and ahead, but anyway, we do once a week and we, clu- we include that on the newsletter. This may be basic, but I know not all churches do this, and so you want to get emails. We have a connect card, so if someone... Even if someone's brand new, if they give you their information, like, it's okay to add it to that or ask your people. Um, we have, I forget, I don't know what it's on my head, but it's definitely a higher than average open rate, mm. which is, yeah. I don't know, i kind of surprised because I feel like it's not that fancy. Yeah. <laughs> but people want to know what's going on in their church. And so if you do it weekly, the same time every week, and only send one one a week, and you include what's happening in your church, people might want to look at that. Yeah, I feel like we should do an episode of effective newsletters. Cause, um, is ours effective, though? Well, I don't know. I think I think it is because it's so basic. Like there's, yeah. like you said, there's no image, there's no, um, you know, I mean, the only links are like links to sign up for things, like yeah. things that literally can't be in there, but it's not like click here for a longer story or something yeah. like that. It's all very basic. And um, not to give you a plug, but Dylan Dodson actually just revamped his own personal <laughs> newsletter <laughs> and true. it's way better than it used to be. <laughs> and so, I, yeah, but I think that's keeping it super basic. I mean, th- I guess this isn't all about newsletters, but keeping it, um, your events in your newsletter. But also, it's it's like all these things. If your newsletter's always been like sporadic or yep. not engaging, then even if you start including in it, people aren't going to click on it. So it's a matter of even if you don't have events right now, getting this newsletter thing kind of get a handle on what's the most effective way to do it. So then people will open it in the future and read about these yep. events. So do it every week on the same day. I mean, ours, if, and I'm not naive, like it has bullet points and stuff because I don't, I know people are scanning, but yeah. if you read the whole thing, it would take you under two minutes. Like, yeah. It's very short. Um, and we send ours on Thursday. I don't know if that's the best, but you know, if we set something, something coming up on the weekend, it's kind of like another reminder. Mm-hmm. But yep. just include your events with a very brief description. Brief description it doesn't need to be super long. If you got a link to the website where they could have more information, you can say click here for more information. Yep. Um, but a weekly newsletter, it's an easy way to let people know what's going on. Yep. Uh, that's number one. Number two, something we do on our newsletter that might be somewhat unique mm-hmm. is we use this tool called Add Event. And you can get it at adevent.com. Um, there's a cost to it, but if you're a nonprofit, they give you a discount. So you just have nice. to like reach out to their support, and they'll give you a discount. We started doing this during the pandemic mm-hmm. when we were not doing anything in person. Everything was online. And someone suggested adding like Google Calendar or Calendar invites into the newsletter so that people could just click it and it adds it to their calendar. Yeah. And so I found this thing called Ad Event. And you can, it's basically you. You put something on the ad event calendar, you copy the the, the code and you put it in, we use MailChimp, you mm-hmm. just put it in the code there and it just populates like an icon for Google, Apple, Microsoft, Yahoo. Right. And all I got to do is click on it. The thing, my only complaint about ad event is that it doesn't tell me 
how many people actually mm-hmm. click on that it. That would be nice. Like yeah. I wish it, I don't know how effective it is, but it is a an easy thing to do. And so on our events, like on our newsletter, you know, we always say coming up on Sunday and then we have a thing, um, you know, if it's something like community groups, which we have coming up or when this airs, like they just started back, that doesn't have like a calendar invite because it's right. just general. But everything else, like a Christmas Eve Eve service recently, um, you know, a serving event, whatever, we have ad event links. And so all you got to do is click on it and it adds it to your calendar. Yeah, I remember when this was brought up um, about adding calendar invites. Like, it never dawned on me because as staff, like, it was always on my calendar. So it, it, yeah. it just didn't even dawn on me that that was a, a a thing to do. But once that was brought up, I was like, that's genius. Because, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, people will read it in your newsletter, which is great. But if that's a, uh, even if that's, like, more than a couple of days out, there's a yeah. chance they're going to forget. But if it's added to their calendar, and especially if your calendar's like mine, where it's, like, Google syncs with iCal and yeah. all those things where it gives you, like, 15 notifications every time events coming up. Then uh, I mean that's if someone adds it to their calendar, that's gonna be better than kind of anything else we do. Yeah, and all they, that's their personal. And stuff. all they have to do is click it. It's easier than like opening up their calendar yeah. and adding it. And you can you you make the invite whatever you want. So you can make it. You can title it whatever you want. You can just like you would on a Google Calendar or all of them. You can include a location if you want to. Mm. You know, time. You know, any other information in the description if you want to. Um, again, unfortunately, I don't have any stats to know how effective it is, but it seems pretty. Interesting. It's yeah. like, I want to do that. I'm just going to click on it, and it goes right into my calendar. Yeah. So Seems pretty simple. That is adevent.com. There's a cost to it. There's a nonprofit discount. But as we always say, cheap, if you're just looking for free, you're not going to always be very effective. So, yeah. you know, there are some things that you should pay for. That's something that we pay for. It's a year subscription, so it's, you know, pretty simple. Yep. Um, number three, another thing that you may or may not do is what we call, maybe there's a better word for it, <laughs> our bathroom <laughs> graphic. <laughs> Um, so what we have, and this works whether you're portable or you yeah, have your own space. Yeah. We just have a little, um, I don't know what you call it, a little see-through. What do yeah, you call a little uh, like... Um, Plastic sign holder thing. Yeah, sign holder. But it's little for like a piece of paper, like eight and a half by 11. Yeah. And all we do is we put at most three mm-hmm. things coming up you know, within the next couple of weeks. Sometimes it's two if there's not a lot. Um, and we put one, we have two bathrooms at our church. We have mm-hmm. a men's bathroom and a women's bathroom. We put it on the sink where everybody washes their hands. Like We have a couple of sinks, but it's just like in one area. And it just has the event, the date, and like a description that's like a sentence or a few words or less, like mm-hmm. super, super short. But they see it, you know, every time you go to the bathroom. Now, yep. what we know is that people don't always read things, right? Yes. And so <laughs> what we also do mm-hmm. is we include a random fact on the bottom of the sheet. That changes every, every week. Every week yep. that we put a new one up there. And again, portable or permanent, all you do is you print a new piece of paper out, you put it into the little plastic sign holder thing, mm-hmm. and you put it in the bathroom where everybody sees it the most. Now, again, you don't have any data to know how effective that is, but if you're washing your hands, like where else are you going to look? You're yeah. just going to look and see what's coming up. It's a very inexpensive and easy way to remind people of things that are coming up. And people, it's so stupid, but people like love random facts yeah. people will say in fact the staff says when they see me printing out a piece yeah. of paper <laughs> yeah. what's the random fact this week like there'll be a couple <laughs> times where if we don't have anything coming up we'll use the same one two yes. weeks in a row <laughs> and it's like it's always a disappointment that sunday if it's, it hasn't changed but like people look for it. i've even heard of churches um like doing the same thing i mean I guess this wouldn't work if you're portable but if you're permanent where you can get the sign holders that have like adhesive to the back of it and put it on the back of a stall door yeah so and people are in there they're reading it but i mean that's just the place where people are always going to be mm-hmm. and there's it's not like it's uh <laughs> I mean, this may sound weird, but like it's not like it's on a screen where you, you're doing other things as well. It's like if you're washing your hands, you're just looking right there. There's nothing yeah. else going on. You're probably not having a conversation. And so there's nothing else to read. And so yeah. it's, it's, I feel like it's the perfect place for something. Yeah. And it's really, it's just, it's more that this is more sort of like a quick reminder. So yeah. Again, they're not going to pull out their phone and yeah, put it on the true. calendar, but <laughs> yeah. it's just like the more they hear about something, mm-hmm. the more likely they're going to see it. And again, as a side tip, putting a little random fact on the bottom so that people actually want to look at it is helpful. Yes. But that's cheap. Yes. It's super easy. Portable knot. You just put a piece of paper in there, put it in the bathroom. People can see it. And it's the same. We use the same template every week. Yeah, every so week. it's just edit the text. It's not like you got to come up with a new graphic every week yeah. or anything like that. So, and just a couple of things. You don't want the whole thing full of text, just a mm-hmm. couple of events. Yeah. And that's what they can. Yeah. I think do. our, I think ours, you may have said, but it's just the event name, like a maybe sentence description, maybe, if that, yeah. and then date and time. That's so it. like if they needed more information, they can find someone to get more information, but it's just a quick thing of what it is. Yeah, it's important to realize that not every place you share the information needs to have all of the information. Yeah. Sometimes it's just reminding people that is co- something that is coming up because mm-hmm. you have too much information, they won't read it. So the bathroom graphic doesn't have, like we have 21 days of prayer happening, right? And mm-hmm. uh, there's no information about it other than just 
it's happening, the date, and they can go, there's the, the URL link if they want more information. But right. it doesn't say anything else because it's just, the bathroom graphic is just to remind people, not to tell them everything about yeah, it. Yeah, just a quick reminder. So that's the bathroom graphic, easy to use, portable or permanent, no matter wherever you meet, mm-hmm. you can do that one. Um, number four is one that we all do, mm-hmm. but you want to be conscious of, and that is your next steps, or as we, we call them next steps, generally called announcements. Um, but you want to do this well, or else people will tune out. We have an episode, I don't know what number it was, about where to do your next steps and your announcements in the service, and you can find that. But this is just the context. What we do is we have three, maybe four, maybe four, typically just three Mm -hmm. next steps a week, and that's it. And one of them is always connect. Like if you're new with us, there's a connect car, which we recommend. That should always be your standard thing, no matter how many people you have coming or how small you are. It's just good to have because it mm-hmm. recognizes there's someone new. People invite their friends. They know they're going to be uh, acknowledged, not in an awkward way. But anyway, so connect. our connect is our first one, which means we only have two, yeah. sometimes three, but we typically 85% of the time just have yeah. two slots <laughs> yeah. of things that are coming up and we keep it short and sweet so they want to listen, but also that they're reminded of it. And I think we also need to re- realize that people aren't thinking months in ahead, advance. Mm-hmm. So if you're sharing something that's a few months ahead of time, nobody cares. Yeah. For us, it's like within four weeks. We don't share it on stage unless it's like within four weeks. Um, yep. And that, I think, is helpful because people know. I mean, everyone knows when your announcement time is. Um, but I, I don't think people tune out ours because it's like 90 seconds or less, and it's pretty short. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember uh, this. Granted, this was a few years ago, so hopefully his opinion hasn't changed. But I remember um, there's a guy who goes to our church who used to be a pastor. And I remember him saying early on that uh, something along the lines of, like, this is the first time that I haven't tuned out church announcements <laughs> just because like they're always the same it's always long it's always boring it's always yep. like maybe one of them applies to me mm-hmm. you know you're just trying to sh- a lot of times people are just trying to share like everything and so we only it's only things that like you said like only things that apply to the vast yeah, majority it, of people there's different stats on it i think we try to do like 80 percent. yeah for cyber. like otherwise people just don't care yeah like if so if we have like a, a specific men's or women's thing yeah. that's really not going to be shared up there unless like there's literally nothing going on yeah. but like which never happens so like it's only stuff that applies to pretty much everybody and that everyone can get something out of and so and we try and keep them really quick really short one thing we do which we've talked about before but when we um do our service run through before service we have the person actually talk through what they're going to say because as we found, and I'm sure other people have found, if, if you don't plan it out, especially if it's someone who hasn't been doing it in a long time, it can be really easy to just assume that they know what yep. to say, and then when they actually get up, kind of just fumble through things, get dates wrong, things like that. So we want to make sure it's quick. We want to make sure it's effective, and it is, I yep. think. Yeah, if you want people to listen to it, sometimes I feel like ours might be too short, but I guess sometimes, it's yeah. too long. <laughs> yeah. But it has to be short. It has to be relevant, So which means like if you have a youth group or a student thing, mm-hmm. that's not something you share from stage. Yeah. Or if you have like a small, even if your church is small, you've got like a, a unique little small group Bible study thing that only two people are going to be interested in. Like mm-hmm. you probably shouldn't, there are exceptions, but generally speaking, you probably shouldn't share from stage or else people are going to tune you out. Right. And so you can share them during your announcements, but keep them limited, keep them, I would say no more than four and keep it to things that are happening within the next four weeks. Otherwise people aren't going to listen. They're not, they just, they're going to think, well, I'll remember this when it comes. And yeah. so keep, only keep things that are coming up shortly. Yes. And then near future. Yep. Um, so next steps. That's number four. Number five is on your personal social media. Mm-hmm. Personal social media. Not church social media, mm-hmm. which we'll talk about. Yep. But your personal social media. Uh, this also allows it to be more, I don't know, You could, on your personal social media, you can be more personal, but you yep. also can share more details in, in ways that like you might not share it on your church's page. Um, with some, you know, <clears throat> an event that you're excited about. So we have coming up, you know, as we're recording this, 21 days of prayer and fasting. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to share it, talk about it this week, and why I think it's important and how it's been beneficial to me. That you wouldn't really do it on a church page. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so if people see that you're personally excited about it. Also, as we know, personal pages, especially on like Facebook and even Instagram, um, personal accounts show people's feeds more than business accounts do. Mm-hmm. And so it's another way to remind your people. They're more likely to engage with it. And so using your personal social media to talk about something that's coming up in your church. But I would encourage it to be something that you're not doing it because 
you don't want people to know, but you're like actually interested in it and yeah. excited about it. Otherwise, people can kind of tell like you're just trying to spam me. Yeah. But make it <laughs> yeah. like, why are you interested in it? What do you get out of it? And people are more likely to want to listen and engage with it because people like to hear stories. So your personal social media is also a good way as long as you're not spammy with it to share your church's events. Yeah, that's good because you can you can speak. I mean, obviously, you can speak differently on your personal social media than on the church's one. Like, obviously, you can use terms like I and things instead yeah. of we. Um, but if you can actually say why you're excited about it or something that people get out of it and not just like copy paste the church post to your yep. to your page, then I think it gets a lot of. Uh, I think it's pretty effective because people. I mean, it's just it's it's just the day and age we live in, everyone follows a million different companies and things. And a lot of times, no matter how engaging it is, people just tune things out, especially if it's an event post, yep. which we'll talk about how that works. But like, people just tune it out if it comes from a from a um, business page. And so when people see you actually saying why you want to do something or why people should come to it, people are more likely to actually listen to you than they yep. are to the church. And as just a little side note, social media thing. I know people, some people are on it more than others. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe particularly to those that are lead pastors. What I would say, if, if you're not someone that posts often, that's fine. But if you're going to post about church stuff, you can't just post about church stuff. Yeah, so you point. need to post other things that you're doing in your life. Even if you feel like nobody cares, people do care. And it's not, again, it's not about like telling everybody what you're doing. But if you only post things that are happening at your church, people are just going to be like, oh, I don't care about this. Yeah. If that makes sense. So it, Yeah, I think you need to have a... It, I mean, it needs to not look like the church's page, I think. Like, <laughs> yeah. it, it, you need to, people want to, like, connect with people on social media regardless of, of your stances on it because they want to connect with the person. And if all they're doing is getting spammed by, yeah. like, it's, it'd be the same thing if you own a company and everything was just, like, buy my thing. It's, people wouldn't want to follow that. Yeah. So, again, I'm not saying you should post all the time, but if you're going to post about church stuff, you know, I probably, that should not be the only thing you post. Just like we talk mm -hmm. about on your church's social media, you should only not, you shouldn't just talk about events. Yeah. You should talk about other things so people actually want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. So, Personal social media, all that to say, is a great place to talk about things that are happening at your church. Um, number six is pre-post, as we call them, mm -hmm. slides. So this is what's rotating on your screens before and after service. Again, this is not like going to change anyone's life, but people see this stuff, and so yep. it's good reminders. Mm -hmm. And so how we have it is we have graphics in ProPresenter that go before and after the service, which are very easy, like, we would encourage everybody to do this. If you oh, have yeah. projectors, don't just put like a, a countdown timer or just, I don't know, welcome to our Logo, church. Like, yeah. like put something that, that rotates. And so for us, we always have, I don't know the magic number. I don't know, seven, eight, nine, maybe things. Yeah. <laughs> we have it set to nine seconds, I think, mm -hmm. somewhere around nine seconds. And they just, they're just going, going the yeah, whole time before. Right. And as soon as service is over, we've got a screen in our lobby. And then we've got obviously screens in the auditorium. Again, I don't know how effective it is, but I do know there have been times where somebody has seen something and it wasn't mentioned like during next steps and it wasn't mentioned during the sermon, but they mentioned it on Sunday because they saw it in the mm -hmm. pre-post slides. And so yeah. it just helps people know what's coming up. Yeah, this I think it helps new people, especially, I mean, this is kind of like a little, I don't know, weird thing. Like new people, if no one's talking to them, they're going to walk in and sit by themselves. And so they're able yep. to see these things. Obviously, you want to talk to them, and you don't want them to sit by themselves. But if someone happens to fall yep. through the cracks, they're, like your, your, your people that are faithfully coming are probably not going to come early, sit inside, and <laughs> see your pre-post slides. But new people may. Mm -hmm. And so having those, um, I think, is really helpful. And I, I think especially just kind of like as you're making these, not making them all look similar yep. really helps. Like I remember a few months ago, we were doing um, an online Bible study through the book of James, and the graphic of it was like bright orange, which is just <laughs> happens to be a color we don't use very much. Yeah. And I remember, um, I think it was our worship leader, like pointed out, it's like, oh, like that one actually stood out to him. He didn't see it coming because it looked so much different than the others. And so having them all not look the same, like don't have a, a template or anything mm -hmm. like that, have them all look different. So that when you do add something different, it actually stands out to people and they don't, they don't tune it out as much as possible. Yeah. And we're really fortunate. Last year, someone started coming to our church mm -hmm. who does graphic media stuff and yep. so he does most of our graphics now yep. so they look really good but even that sometimes we'll use some graphics will have similar background colors mm -hmm. and so what we'll do in the pre-post is we'll make sure they're not together so if we have yeah. two predominantly teal slides you don't want to put them back to back because then people don't notice a change you want to kind of contrast the colors and so even the slides that you have make sure like the the colors and stuff are different yeah and just as a side note the ones that are more important you put in the front yeah. Um, especially like after service, so they're seen. Mm. Um, so we always talk about giving at the end of service. So now it's no longer the first thing, but like the first thing, the most important thing that we want people to know or that's 
quickest thing that's coming up is always the first slide that gets shown mm-hmm. as soon as we say you are sent and in the service because people are still somewhat looking at the screen. Yep. <laughs> so it's a way without yep. taking extra time to do an announcement to like show people something. As soon as the service is over, get your person to go to the pre-post slides and make sure the one something you want people to know about is the first slide that pops up. Yeah, I mean, I think the whole point of this this whole thing is you want to have as many touches for an yep. event or whatever as possible. And having pre-post slides is not going to be the like magic bullet. Like it's yep. not going to be what makes everyone sign up for things, but just another touch it's just another thing in yeah. the whole list of them and if you're already using if, if you're have during your announcement time or next steps time if you already have a graphic when you're talking about it then you already have the pre-post graphic as well just True. throw it in there yep. so that's number six number seven is a tool we use called text and church there are a lot of different platforms this one is not the cheapest um i know no, that but might, might be the best yeah it works great for us yeah. it's just text and church we use them for a couple things it's our um, automated follow-up process so you can send out text and emails um like automated for a couple of weeks, and we mm-hmm. have episodes on our follow-up process. Um, so we use it that way, but we also, you know, have everybody. We have a all church notifications text mm-hmm. that we send out. Now we do this two <laughs> to three times a month at most. Yes, do not abuse this. Maybe once a month. <laughs> uh. You know, like we use this very rarely, so yeah. it's not like every Sunday on th- on Friday. Hey, hope to see you on Sunday. It's for things that are different mm-hmm. or. Really, re- really relevant to everybody. If it's not relevant to everybody, do not send it to everybody. Yeah. So, for example, our Christmas Eve Eve service. You know, two days before, we sent an all you know text to everybody, or we don't we don't meet on the last Sunday of the year, mm-hmm. something like that. Um, if there's a significant change that you want people to know, you can use a service like Text and Church, where you have people's phone numbers and you text them to let them know what's coming up. Just a little pro tip for you: always include the name of your church in the text mm-hmm. because people won't know who it is. Maybe they've saved it to their phone or whatever. But we always say something like, you know, at New City Church this weekend, or don't forget at New City... Like, New City Church is always in the text message so that they know, like, this is from the church. It is, yeah. Otherwise, people will be confused. Um, But text and church is something that we use, Mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's still like this. When we signed up for it a couple years ago, they had these, like, pre-recorded webinars that you could watch, and if you watched it at the end, they give you a discount code. Mm. So... Check that out. Watch it before you pay for it. If that's still a thing, I don't yeah. know. But that's another way you can send text messages to people periodically about things that are coming up. Yeah, that's really good. This is the kind of thing where obviously, I mean, it's just like newsletters where you don't want to abuse it because yep. if people get annoyed with emails, they would really get annoyed with texts. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also everyone is going to open it. I mean, like <laughs> everybody opens text. <laughs> What did you say? Everybody opens text. Everyone opens text. I was gonna. I was gonna say there's there's a girl on our staff who we found out recently had like 500 un, un, yes. unopened texts. So Other than her, uh, like 99 percent <laughs> of people will open text. <laughs> but like it's it's not you know it's like 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 the others. It's not the only thing that you need, but it it is everyone will see it. Like period. Whether they read it, whether they click on the link is a different story. Um, but everyone will read it. So using this for the most important things, I think, is really good yeah. because if you start using it for not important things, I'm either going to unsubscribe or I'm going to make sure to save the number so I can ignore it when it comes. <laughs> like, but, but like right now they come like even I don't I'm Dylan's one right you set it up Dylan's one that sets it up I don't set it up so I don't know when they're necessarily coming. So even now when I get a text from New City I'm like, oh I wonder I mean I I know what it's about but yeah. like I wasn't necessarily expecting it because we don't necessarily plan them together. Um, but and I'm on staff and I know everything that's coming. So if it can yeah. like catch me a little bit off guard, then that's really good. That means that's going to catch other people off guard too. Yeah. So text and church again. There's other platforms that you can look to yeah. that end, but it's nice to periodically text everybody. Again, another reminder for significant events that you want everybody, not 80 percent, but like 90 percent to 100 percent. Yeah. And it's not that everyone will come or care, but it's relevant to them that they could do this thing if they wanted to. Yeah. That's text and church number seven. And then number eight, last but not least, is on your website homepage. Mm. Now, we, again, do not have a website extraordinaire on our staff. But we have an extraordinary <laughs> website. <laughs> <laughs> no, Brian everyone, said it, not me. No, I don't our know website's pretty good. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. um, so we've used different things in the past. We used uh, Nucleus. Nucleus. Church. Now yep. we're using the Church Co. It's a little cheaper. We like the design better. Mm-hmm. Um, they all have different strengths and weaknesses. But one of the things that we do, and this is, I think, more relevant for smaller churches. Yeah. Here's the thing. The people that are going to your website are new people predominantly. So we've got an episode somewhere <laughs> about what you should put on your homepage. Mm-hmm. Things like your time and location need to be like right up top. Um, you know, like an I'm new tab. You know, things that like if someone's new, it just they, they need to know what to do. They don't yeah. need to be searching for it. Um, the only reason your people would go to your page is if they are told like go to the specific URL. So like mm-hmm. we, for example, our 20 days of prayer fasting, it's like newcityru.com slash prayer. 
well, people aren't really probably going to remember the URL, yeah. but they'll remember the website. So they'll go to the website, and they want to find the event. Mm -hmm. And so what you want to do is, and I don't know if website people will tell you this is smart or not. I'm just, this is just what we do because we're not a massive church. It's probably different if you're bigger, but it definitely has to be. What we do is we have two areas. If you go to our website, because you know we have an event coming up that you're looking for. One is we have upcoming events, like a little tab mm -hmm. so you can click on. And the other one on our homepage, if you scroll down just a little bit, like under all the important information, if you're new, it says upcoming events. And it has like graphics for the things coming up and you can click on it. So it's, yeah. it's easy to find all, all, all that to say. It doesn't, it should not be, like some people have like the rotating mm. thing, which I don't know that's still the best thing to do. I don't um, think it is. <laughs> but sometimes like you'll highlight your upcoming events before all the information. You shouldn't do that. It should yeah. always be yeah. your location and your service times. Like that should be the number one thing, social media or whatever for new people. But somewhere on the homepage where they don't have to go searching it too far, it should be obvious where upcoming events are. So if they're on your website looking for something, they'll be able to find it because that's pretty much the only reason most people that go to your church go to your website anymore mm -hmm. is to find something that's coming up. Yeah, I mean, I was joking when I said we have an extraordinary website, but like, we, I think ours is good because we use a template that allows yeah. us to do this. And so it's not like we're these great web designers. We don't do any of it, really. Yep. Um, but one thing that was pretty um, in common with Nucleus and ChurchCo, and I don't know that those are like literally the two best, but they're the two I see recommended the most in like church Facebook groups and stuff. So they're probably the two most like known, I guess, maybe, yep. um, at least in what the conversations I see, they both have a same similar idea where it's like you're highlighting your most important thing, yep. and that most important thing is not your upcoming event, honestly, but that needs to be in there. And so making it like, I, I, I'm sorry, but ch some church websites, they're just so confusing to navigate, or they just don't have like the important information where you think it should be. And so like I, using using one of these, not that like I don't know. I don't want to say that sound like a commercial forum, but like using them really helps you simplify your website. Yep. And honestly, like if I was building a website, like I can I can build a WordPress site <laughs> and it would and like maybe it would look fine, but like it would it would not be as simple to navigate as any of these. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that churches like a lot of pastors have like a little side gig of web design <laughs> and um want to make their own thing and it's cool, but like I don't know. I just I just see a lot that are kind of more convoluted than they need to be. Yep. And so making it super simple, making this event where, you know, and an easy place to find, but not the highlight of the page, I think is effective. Yep. So again, that's just another simple way to keep it in front of your people. Yep. So those are eight ways to keep your church calendar in front of those people. We do all eight of these, which I think really helps. Um, and so these are some things that you can try. And I don't, I mean, these are eight different things, but I don't think I don't think our people will tell you they feel spanned by our church events. Yeah, I was kind of, when you when you put this, I was like, we do eight? Wow. And yeah. I looked at it, I was like, oh, yeah, we do eight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're, they're just small things. Yeah. And so they're and they're easy, and most of them are free, although free is not always the best. Sometimes it's worth paying some money True. to do things. Now, the last thing that you might be thinking that we didn't mention mm -hmm. is... The obvious. What about my church's social media? Yep. Uh, I am con increasingly convinced that there's... That's not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not engaging. It's boring. And people don't care. Mm -hmm. um, we, so like, again, we have other episodes that just talk about how if your stuff's not engaging, Facebook and Instagram, whatever, will, will suppress your stuff even more. Mm -hmm. And so if all you ever press, post is like your Sunday series or your Sunday service and your upcoming events, like yeah. nobody cares about that sort of thing. And so we don't post very many of our events on social media no. unless it's like something... I know it's not going to be engaged with, but it's important to what we're doing. So, for example, 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting, yeah. it's not something we normally do. We're going to post it. It's not going to get a lot of engagement, but it's like something we want to remind people of. Mm -hmm. At the same time, our community groups are back up in January. We're not posting that on social media. Yeah. Part of that is nobody on social media is going to be like, oh, I'm going to sign up for a community group because I saw it. Yes, it could help keep it in front of them, but that's not the type of thing that is going to convince someone to join a group. Yeah. And people just, they don't care about it. And so... Our belief is if you're doing these other eight things, that should be enough than wasting your social media, I don't know what the word is, <laughs> ability to get in people's feeds on things that people aren't going to engage with. Even if they care about the event, they're not going to engage with it, so it's gonna, it's, no one's going to see it, and then your other posts aren't going to be seen. Now, there are some exceptions. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, our 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting is not going to be engaged with. It's not going to be seen by very many people. It's not, like, the best idea. Yeah. But it's important to us. But, like, our Christmas Eve Eve services... 
people are excited about that. Or mm-hmm. if you do like a trunk or treat, or if you do Easter, there are some events that people are like super excited about. And yeah. for those, and plus if they're bigger, you should post them anyway. Mm-hmm. But the ones that you know that never get any engagement, I would, I don't think posting on social media is going to do you really going to help you, but it will, it can hurt you. Yeah. The, the only thing that I can think of that we do that's been um, pretty effective with events is some events and like stress some will create a Facebook event for. Yeah, Facebook event. Yeah. Facebook event is different. But but if you do a Facebook event for once a month things, oh. I, it's going to get annoying. I'm, or every and, Sunday. Or, I've seen, <laughs> and I get it. I've yeah. seen church planners yeah. that are like desperate. It's so like, nope. Yeah. Gonna care. yeah, it needs to be like a special thing. Like we, we had a Christmas party like a, a, yep. for people serving. And like, so part of it is like, if, if, we, if you need to cater food, sometimes you got to know what, how many people are going to come. Mm-hmm. Um, but like that'll, that'll help because obviously they'll get a reminder that the next day or the day before, whatever it is, that there's an event that they signed up for that day or that their friends are interested in. So like something like that is helpful, but just random posts. Yep. Like I, I, I think we all wish that social media operated where like, People, people's timeline was just chronological that like posts showed up when they were posted and then maybe this would work but if things don't get engaged they're with they're just not yeah. going to be seen and that's going to penalize your other posts that are more important and again so. just because they like your page even if you unless somebody has gone to your like Facebook page for example and prioritize like see this yeah. first they're not going to see a lot of your stuff which nobody does nobody which does. is unfortunate even <laughs> yeah. if they want to yeah, and again, nobody's yeah. going to go on your Facebook page and do that unless other people engage with it mm-hmm. or unless they're always engaging with it. So, like, if you typically, like, we have a few people that like and or comment on, like, a lot of our stuff. Yeah. And part of it is because they like our stuff, but also because they do that, Facebook always shows it to them. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. they're going to click on it. So yeah. you want to create stuff that's engaging so that people's news feeds will show your stuff and your events are not a way to do that. And so I think the ones that people are really excited about or the ones that you think are really important, but not every event is important yep. for us, like prayer and fasting. It's just it's an important thing for us that we don't normally do. It's worth losing some cachet from Facebook and Instagram, if you will. Yeah. But you can't do that on everything. And so all that being said, church, so your church's social media is not the best place for posting about events. And one thing like about the uh, 21 days of prayer and fasting, I will, I would bet, I mean, we'll see if I'm right. Maybe I'm not, but um, I would assume that if since we don't post as many events, the the times that we do, it'll probably get shared more because, I mean, people will see it more because it's not something that we post very often. Mm-hmm. Where if we were posting something every month, I don't think it would get engaged with very much. But something like this, which is like a, a unique thing, we only do it once a year. I would imagine this one thing will get engaged with more than if we were yep. to say do an event every month. Yep, so. that's good. So those are eight things that you can do to keep your calendar in front of your people, and one thing that you shouldn't do very often. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, thanks for listening. Again, if you're not in the Facebook group, Radical Church Planning, and if you're listening to this on the podcast, you can also find us on YouTube. Yes. Radical Church Planning. Come so find us. Come find us. Share with your friends, and we'll be with you next week on Radical Church Planning.